everyone. Like always, I have been thrift shopping lately to see what kind of treasures I can find. I go really often and I usually go probably three to four times a week. So I am literally always there, always checking to see what cool things I can bring home. And I spotted some interesting things at this large thrift store near me just the other day. As you can see, this one is very, very large, lots of furniture. Lots and lots of baskets, um, lots of wooden pieces, and there are also lots of clothes, which I don't always take the time to look at. There's something new here every time, and you just never know what you're going to find. On one of my last trips, I found this beautiful print. It's very old. It has to be probably from the 70s or so. It was very, very dirty. They hadn't bothered to clean it. So I brought it home anyway because I could tell that I really liked the colors of the print and I thought it would be really nice for fall. I cleaned all of the glass off camera, but as you can see with this one, it's just very hard to actually see the print very well with the glass. And from certain angles in the room, you really kind of can't tell what you're looking at or it catches a glare from our front window. So I just wanted to show you that even though I had actually cleaned all of the glass thinking I would leave it on, I decided to just take it off and look at the difference that it makes just removing this glass completely from this print. You can see how vivid these colors are and it's like a whole new piece really. I think this one is just beautiful and I'm going to place it on my mantle along with my fall decor. It really pulls in those burgundies and the oranges and the scene I think is meant to be set in the fall with the red and the trees, but I like that it's not just any landscape. It also incorporates water and the sailboat. It's just a little bit different than what you see all the time. And this is how it looks on my mantle just so much richer than it looked with the glass. And speaking of glass that needs to come off, I also have this piece that is currently in my daughter's room over her dresser. And as you can see, we're having the same problem. It looks really good from a couple of angles, but there are angles in the room where you can't see what you're looking at because of the glare from the window. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just taking the back completely off and I'm going to remove the glass and I had to Google because I couldn't quite remember how to read my Roman numerals, but apparently this piece is from 1978. And you can see just how much better it actually looks in the room after that glass is gone. No matter what angle you're looking at it from, it looks great. A simple wall decor idea is to collect three or more pieces of art with a common theme and hang them in an odd numbered group like this. I collected these floral pieces from different thrift stores over time and simply hung them together. Another thing that I found on this thrift trip was this beautiful mirror. And boy was it filthy. As you can see it has a thick layer, probably multiple layers of grime and dust and also lots of fun decorative stickers that have been on there for who knows how long. Um, I'm not sure what some of those characters are, but I see a couple of Spice Girls stickers if that is any indication. So I'm thinking what this mirror pretty much needs is just a really, really good clean. So first step for me is always to get out my favorite product for removing any sticky residue and that's Goo Gone. You can get this in a small bottle um, that you just kind of pour out a few drops or you can get it in a spray bottle and these days I've really been liking the spray version so I spray this all over the stickers I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes and these should come off much much easier I'm going to use my scraper tool as well and now that this is sat for a few minutes I'm just going to get started getting all the stickers off first before I clean anything else some are definitely easier than others But as you can see, these Spice Girls stickers did not really want to move. So they required a little extra elbow grease. But eventually I got there, I got all of the sticky residue off and then it was just using a lot of window cleaner over and over, probably six or seven times at least I had to go over this to get not only the grime, but then the residue from the Goo Gone and the sticker adhesive that had kind of spread out off.
And then what I decided to do was to get a few Q-tips and wet them with some more window cleaner and go in these grooves all along the frame. And there was actually a lot of dust built up in there that you couldn't really see. But once I did that, I could definitely see it and I wanted to get it all out. I did the same thing all around the pattern pieces around the outside of the frame. And I know this was just a simple clean and go, but this made all the difference. And just from passing by that mirror hanging on the wall there at the thrift store, and it looked filthy to all cleaned up and sitting in my home, it's just such a huge difference. Here's my cat, Curry, who is enjoying the wire that's hanging off the back. So I tried several different spaces. I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to use this, but I ended up using it on this little console table that is the first thing you see when you walk in the door. It's kind of in front of you in our front living room, and I think it looks really great. I'm very happy with the purchase for only $9.99 great price. And now I need to run back to Goodwill so that I have some more inspiration for some further projects. This is my local Goodwill. I am fortunate enough to live only a few minutes away so I pop in here all of the time. They have a pretty quick turnover, so there's usually at least a few new things on the shelves every time I pop in. You just never know what you're going to find here. I thought this soup terrine was so pretty and this gravy boat, but I really didn't need either one. I did find this cute little pumpkin for only $1.99, and to me it reminded me of tortoise shell, even though it's not exactly, but it had that vibe. But I was wondering if it might look a little better with some of my other decor if it wasn't quite so shiny and glossy. And so I decided to just take some of my um, flat finish Mohawk clear lacquer and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray to take some of that gloss off. And here it is after the spray has dried. It still has a little bit of a sheen because I didn't do a thick coat or multiple coats, but it just takes a little bit of that shine off. And so here you can see the before and after. And while I do like it nice and glossy, I think that um, just in my home on the table that I'm going to use it on, it looks a little more modern and clean without so much shine, especially right next to my very shiny gold pot. And the next thing that I want to do is transform this lamp that I have had from a while. It was from that same Goodwill shop. I want to use it on one of my entryway tables because it's large and I want to swap out my small one. But I'm not loving the, the black color anymore and I want to make it less shiny and turn it into more of a aged vessel sort of ceramic look. So I am going to start by just taking some sandpaper and sanding it all down so that the paint will stick. And then I'm using this color by Valspar called Clay Angel and mixing it with some baking soda to give it a little bit of texture. I'm just giving it a little stir and then I'm going to paint it all over with a first rough coat. As I've said in another video, I really find painting things relaxing and satisfying, so for me this is kind of fun. Now 
Make sure that if you're going to be painting a lamp or anything corded that you take the time to put some painter's tape on the base of the cord first or else you'll be like me and have to stop in the middle and take care of that and slow down your progress. Now I'm just going to let this dry. It needs several hours to be super dry and I'm going in with a second coat afterwards. I'm making sure to keep my strokes horizontal because that's the look that I want to have on this piece. And here it is dry. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is taking some dirt from outside and in this case I'm using actual potting soil that was in one of my pots. I tried actual clay, the soil around my area is very clayish, but um, I tried it on a different uh, vessel and it is quite orangey so I went back to this more like potting soil color and I'm going to start really really light because I'm not honestly sure how um, rich I want the distressing and the aging on this. So as you can tell, it doesn't take much. I'm pushing really lightly and then just wiping off, but almost immediately it starts to give it more depth and I really like what I'm seeing here. The reason I'm going slow and kind of light handed with this is because I know I can always keep adding more. This is what it looks like when I've finished up inside. However, I actually did go back and add just a little bit more when I took it outside before I ended up spraying it with my clear coat. So first I just brushed off all of the excess like pieces of dirt that were on and I obviously don't want those on it forever and just left behind the nice color and then I gave it a spray of that same matte finish mohawk spray that I used on my little pumpkin and let that dry and then it was ready to take inside. And this is the final result. I was really happy with the way this turned out. I think that this just gives it a lot more depth and a lot more visual interest sitting on my front table by my stairway than a plain cream colored lamp and I love it. One of the fun aspects of projects like this for me is that I really enjoy changing things up and just having things look fresh and different for a while, but with the knowledge that I can always go back and change it to something else later if I'm so inclined. I hope this video has in some way inspired you to try something new, try out a DIY, go to the thrift stores and just see what inspires you and get crafty and get creative. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like or subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you. See you next time.